Hey, everybody, welcome to the Sky Lounge. We're going to review some Lakers action from two days ago as we win 120 to 107 against the Philadelphia 76ers. Hooray! They didn't have him beat Simmons or Richardson, but hooray! It's a win! You beat a fucking team without their stars. You're a fucking shit team. Lakers fucking suck. Yeah! Yeah, is that the typical narrative? Is that what you think happened in this fucking game? The Lakers just stomped on the fucking 76ers? No! Far from it. You know what actually happened in this game? I'll tell you the kind of narrative. Once upon a time, the Lakers had a home game. And in this home game, they were going to face an opponent that didn't look all that great. But you start off real slow. And the opponent gets on you. They take early leads. They make you feel uncomfortable. Then the Lakers come out in the second half. Start kicking all sorts of ass. Third and fourth quarter, they just stranglehold that shit. And try to get a win. Squeeze it out. Typical narrative for the Lakers. And some nights it doesn't work. But this is one of those nights where that, that narrative fell exactly through. Like, it's the exact fucking way I just stated it. Okay. The, the Lakers came out flat in that first quarter. And the Philadelphia 76ers jumped on it. With a 35-28 to lead by the end of the first quarter. The Lakers were uh, a tad bit disinterested. I, I guess that would be the word. And Frank Vogel, as he sees the Lakers go down 11 points at the start of the second quarter, takes a timeout. He's irritated. He's not having any more of this shit, which, thank God. Thank God for a good fucking coach. No offense to Luke Walton, who, yeah, half the Kings just drown in Sacramento. Double agent Luke Walton. But Frank Vogel is a very adamant coach, and he understands that Shit, I mean, regular season or not, I mean, the team mentality has to be developed throughout the regular season. That is something that people don't really talk about as much. It's always about uh, load management. It's about minutes. It's all about all the shit. But it's also about having the right mindset and mind frame for the regular season and, and beyond that to the playoffs. And so Frank Vogel instilling discipline in his guys early, saying, hey, 11 points to starless team that just playing really hard and getting you guys the stars and fucking skates come on guys get, let's get it going and so the lakers just go off with ad and ad with 18 points in the second quarter 26 points by the end of the second quarter holy shit holy shit AD is just so refreshing to watch. He is so refreshing to watch. Just the offense and defense is, is, is just, it's art. It's fucking art. And the entire team took that philosophy to heart. Defense to offense, defense to offense. And soon the Lakers jump out to a relatively decent lead, 54 to 65. And once you start going out in this third quarter, the explosive Lakers happen. Here come the Lakers, coming out with a early 21-point lead, start third quarter, and just continually suppressing down the goddamn Philadelphia 76ers, who, by all accounts, were having a pretty decent game. But, you know, by the tail end of this third quarter, when the Lakers are leading at 96-80, you, you, you know the writing's on the wall. The fucking 76ers aren't going to do all that great. Because on the other side, with the Lakers, you have all these guys, you know, guys not named LeBron James, nor AD, nor Kuzma, just doing the fucking work in business. Avery Bradley, KCP, and lest we forget, Dwight Howard with the fucking low post moves, just doing the fucking 76 They're so dirty, and man, it's just so great to watch stuff like that. And having the... 76ers just more or less crapped themselves out of this game was fun, but somewhat sad. I, I guess that's the word, but simultaneous. I don't give a shit. Fuck the 76ers. Are you fucking kidding me? I remember that 2001 final. I remember that fucking 2001 season back in LA. Like, oh my God. Yo, Kobe and Shaq. They're going to be amazing. They're gonna be the greatest fucking postseason team. Yeah. And then AI happened. Although, I don't hate AI. I think 
Allen Iverson is one of the most underrated fucking players in NBA history. I like, I <laughs> call me crazy, but I love AI. I love what he did. The answer is one of the fucking greatest. And yeah, that that disrespect to Tyron Lewis. I, I'm I, I don't hate AI. I just don't like the 76ers. I just don't. And man. Despite me not liking there, there was a lot of good workman style guys that you had to just give a huge shout to. Uh, Glenn Robinson, 25 points, four rebounds, one assist, one steal. Tobias Harris, obviously a guy who is well paid, well to do, and has had a significant impact at the 76ers. 18.7 rebounds, two assists. Now, another relatively no name guy, I mean, Tobias Harris is the no, you know, Known known commodity as is Al Horford, who gave you eight points, eleven rebounds, three assists, one steal, one block. But a guy like Shake Milton, coming out of the woodwork, kind of like Glenn, Glenn Robinson in, in a way. Uh, Twelve points, one rebound, six assists, three steals. It's just a depleted squad, but a lot of good effort was shown by the non stars, and I think that's a huge thing for the 76ers uh, moving forward in the Eastern Conference, which like. He, he, Eastern Conference is such a fucking joke, aside from the three teams. And if you needed me to say that louder, yeah, the Eastern Conference is a fucking joke other than the three top teams, which I say is the Bucks, the Celtics, and the Raptors. Sorry, everybody else. You're all just kind of there. And I, I, I would put the Heat as a wild horse, too. That, that's just... That's just something that we have to put out there. Although their relative inconsistency in the last few weeks has been a bit concerning. But the Lakers have been pretty goddamn consistent throughout the season, right? They have. They have, boys and girls. And the man who has just driven this team to this next level, a long slide, LeBron James, who gave us 22.7 rebounds, 14 assists, one steal, two blocks, is... Anthony Davis, 37 points, 12 rebounds, 2 assists, 4 steals, 2 blocks! God damn! That defense! Mwah! I, I know a lot of people are going to fixate on 37 points. Oh, he could have gone 40. Do you understand how fucking amazing this guy is, even without the offense? Holy shit! Did you know? He was... He won the NCAA championship as a primary defensive player because his offense was shit in the final. So, yeah, that's how good he is on defense. Good God. And alongside him was somebody who doesn't get enough praise, I feel like. I mean, maybe in the Lakers circle he does. But Avery Bradley, 10.8 Five rebounds, I apologize. Three assists, two steals. A phenomenal night from Avery, too. Again, the points won't suggest too much. I mean, the idiots who are just looking at the points purely and saying, oh, this guy sucks. You're all fucking idiots. Watch the actual game. Again, I, I say that with almost every goddamn sport because the eye test does not lie. Unless you have shitty eyes, get that shit checked, son. But Kyle Kuzma is one of those cases where the points will not do him any favors. Like, it just won't. Uh, seven points, six rebounds on 30% field goal shooting. Just, ugh. Real ugh kind of stuff. But I'll tell you what I'm seeing with Kuz. Kuzma, post Kobe Bryant stuff, has been a ball of energy. He has been a mini Swiss army knife from the Lakers bench to catapult the team to that second drive and there's gonna be a lot of people that say no to that I mean that, that flat out you know reject that idea that I'm putting out there but all those idiots who have been complaining to get rid of Kuzma all this shit it won't happen it won't sorry trade deadline's gone it's over and Kuzma is going to continue to be a vital part of this team. And when I see the seven points, six rebounds, I don't see an abject failure like all the fucking Lakers fuckboy fans, uh, fans want to say. But in all honesty, I still see Kyle Kuzma as an immense resource and a, again, a Swiss Army knife, a mini Swiss Army knife that can come off the bench and about the Lakers. Get that push. So the Lakers win. 
at home. And the next next game is going to be against the Bucks tomorrow. Boy, at Staples Center. That should be a good one, but I am very worried about it because just how unbelievable the Bucks have been. So should be an interesting one. Let's see how Giannis and the game do against LBJ. AD and the super crew. So boys and girls, that does it for me. Follow me at the Sky Lounge and all the links in the description below. Like, comment, subscribe for more daily contents. Now fuck off.